Welcome back. South Dakota here at Frost tonight. The battle with the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State and it's in a game, Jim Thompson, that is very, very important for both concerns. I know that uh, Gene Zalt felt before this weekend started that this was must-win time. And of course, it's almost... Uh, too simplified to even say it. The Jacks were down with a three and two mark. They needed to win. Of course, the uh, University of North Dakota, the game team they're playing tonight, was in the race, but especially North Dakota State. The Bison last night came to Frost Arena with a 4-0 record. If the Jacks won tonight, but lose uh, last night, then it wouldn't have mattered because somebody had to beat the Bison. And the Jacks decided, hey, this is the time. We've got to knuckle down and do it. And they did just that. They won it by nine points. Pretty good crowd here last night to appreciate that victory against the Bison. And tonight, about that many and more are turned out to hope that the uh, University of North Dakota uh, fighting Sioux follow that same route as far as the Jackrabbits are concerned. And there's quite a few faithful I see from North Dakota down to help their club uh, inspire to a win also. Because now there's about, what, four teams, five teams in the race. And the Jackrabbits go right down to the wire again. Jackrabbits are just a half game out of first place. And hello to you, too. And wherever you may be watching across the great state of South Dakota, here on the South Dakota Public Television Network, they sliced up a few pounds of hog here tonight, too. They had the park barbecue. Just a, uh, between uh, the girls' game, which you just saw, there was a high school uh, basketball game, by the way, in which Hamlin County defeated James Valley Christian 75-49. to Mark Tetzlaff, being touted by some as the best high school player in South Dakota, scored 27 points, had 24 rebounds, and leading Hamlin to the win. You know, Jim, we talked about last night's uh, South Dakota State win over North Dakota State. Interesting to note that with three minutes to go in that game, it was tied 58-58. And really, the Jackrabbits had their backs to the wall, literally, as we talked about needing a win to stay in the conference race. They outscored the Bison 12-3 over the last three minutes of that game to claim the victory. It was a little bit of a different story for the Sioux last night down in the Sioux Falls Arena against Augustana. The Vikings just never got anything going. You, you were at that ball game, so right. you'll be able to talk with uh, some authority about the way this game goes tonight. Well, I was very impressed with the Sioux last night. They're a very strong, physical basketball team, and they've got a lot of people that are uh, that are very, very capable. We talk about Clawson, Iverson, Bakken, Harris. They're all very strong players. Say hi to everybody, too, there. And as we see the Jackrabbits come back, on the other hand, also, Augustana did not play very good basketball last night. So, again, it shapes up as being a very, very big game. The Sioux and the Jackrabbits right in the thick of a conference race. The Jackrabbits at 4-2. and two. Their losses in the NCC have come to morning spot on the road in a game they felt they could have won easily. And they lost to UNO. They have beaten USC, Augie, North Dakota State, and Northern Colorado. Uh, interestingly enough, North Dakota's only loss game at Morningside also in a very close game. They have won in the conference over USD, UNO, UNC, and Augustana. Six of the uh, South Dakota State eight losses have been under 10 points, Tom, so that is significant in the fact that they have taken some tough losses. Meanwhile, the University of North Dakota with four losses have lost three times by scores of one, two, or three points. The only double-digit uh, deficit was at Northern Illinois. They got beat 70 to 56. Mike just mentioned, we're going to get caught up, I'm sure, in the uh, excitement of this ball game, the large crowd that's on hand, and we may not get a chance to mention it, and since it was last night, and we didn't get a chance to broadcast that one, we need to point out that Steve Lingenfelter last night needed just three points in order to go over 1,000 points in his career scoring at South Dakota State, and he did that. He scored 17 points. It was not the best night, perhaps, that he might have had, but 17 points puts him at 1,014 points now that he has scored. It was his 48th 
game as a Jackrabbit player. And maybe you remember last winter, Jim Walker also went over 1,000, but he took it in 57 games. Nobody else has ever made it in less than 60. So Steve Lingenfelder, King Ling, I guess. I don't know if they still call him that, but he's done a fine job. Superior job for the Jackrabbits, and last night reached that 1,000-point plateau. And he, of course, is going to be a key in his game tonight. He was in foul trouble last night. That has been his biggest bugaboo this season. In fact, since he has joined the Jackrabbits, the only thing that has held Steve Lingenfelder back is foul trouble. Last night, he was in trouble against North Dakota State, managed to score 17 points. He, it's hard to keep him from getting 15 points in a game. I think that's where a, a team will draw the line, though. If you can hold Lingenfelder to 15 points, you got to feel like you're doing your job. The 17 last night undoubtedly is going to lower his average, perhaps, but uh, in the... Sporting News last week, he's not in there this week, but in last week's issue, he was number six in the nation in small college scoring leaders. Okay, let's meet the Fighting Sioux of North Dakota. First of all, a 6'2 junior and a guard from De La Salle High School in Chicago, Aaron Harris. He will team with Doug Moe, a 6'2 senior from Duluth East. At the forward, Jim Iverson from North Crawford High School in Soldiers Grove, Wisconsin, 6'4 and a senior. The other forward, 6'7 senior from Fargo, North Bakken in the center, Dan Clawson, leading scorer, leading rebounder for the Sioux, 6'7 and a junior out of Omaha, Benson. The Sioux are coached by Dave Gunther, of course, who has won over 200 games in his tenure with the Sioux and has never had a losing season. For the Jackrabbits, they will start at guard tonight. First of all, we're gonna have our junior Jack. Yep. All right, I like that program. We gotta be the thrill of his life to go out there and give the high five to the rabbit. Starting at one guard from Hampton, Iowa, a six-foot sophomore, Phil Jorgensen. At the other guard, John Elwood Brown, six-foot junior from Hamlet High School. Hails from Bryant. At the forward from Chisholm, Minnesota, 6'5", senior Paul McDonald. At the other forward from Fairmont, Minnesota, at 6'9", and a junior Bob Windsorburg. And the center, the man they call King Ling from Thomas Jefferson High School in Bloomington, Minnesota, Steve Lingenfelder. That little guy, probably, the, as you said, the highlight of his life. He was out there uh, starstruck, probably didn't even know where to go from that moment, but that's an exciting time and a good program, the Junior Jack program. There's Dave Gunther and his assistant. You told me this is the man that played basketball with Wilt Chamberlain. Right. He is 43 years old, a native of Lamar's, Iowa. 1959, played with the Detroit Pistons. 1962, the San Francisco Warriors. His finest year in North Dakota, 1960. 76-77, the Sioux is 26-4. Names like Chris Marbach, Mike Doylick, Fred Lukens, but also a young freshman at that time, Jim Iverson, the only remaining man still with the Sioux. Tip is controlled, bang around, Clausen finally gets it. They'll give it to Todd Bakken. Lead in the NCC, or at least a good share of it early in the season. Here's the high lob pass inside, they want to go to Bakken, but Windsorburg will be there to knock it out of bounds. So the game is 12 seconds old. The Sioux will play it in from underneath their own basket. Iverson into Moe. Now back out front to Aaron Harris, who was superb last night against Doggy. He had 27 points, and he's going for it right now. Partially blocked, Lingenfeller still went in. I think he got a finger on it on the way up, but Harris got a kind roll on the first basket of the game. Two zip to Sioux. Jackrabbits looking at some half-court pressure now applied by the Sioux. Brown around the perimeter to Jorgensen inside. Throw it as Clawson will tip it away and steal it from Steve Lingenfelder. Moe quickly down to Aaron Harris. Around the perimeter to Iverson. Back out front to Moe. Pass to the wing. Iverson has the ball knocked out of his hands from behind. Clawson picks it up, averaging 18 points, 12 rebounds. On officials, Pat Millett of Blair, Nebraska, Tom Peralta of St. Paul. Todd way short, no good by Harris. Here come the Rabbits out on the run. Three on two, but now the two will get back. Jorgensen from downtown, no good. Rebound is picked out of there by Bakken. Now to Moe's. The Sioux, I guess, have become known in the past couple of years, especially under Dave Gunther, as a team that likes to be patient on offense and a team that lives on good, solid defense. Bakken from atop the three line, got it. So Todd Bakken has given the Sioux a four to nothing lead. A minute 40 seconds into the game. Bakken averaging 13 points a game, Clawson 19.3. He's the leading scorer for the Sioux. Sioux will play sagging man to man against the Jackrabbits. Winsenberg, 22 yards good. Tom Winsenberg 
Eric who can hit him from the weeds and he can take it in and slam with the best of them. Gets the rabbits on the board. He's a 13.5 scorer on the season. He has averaged about 12 points every time he's put on a uniform for South Dakota State. He has started every game since he stepped on campus. Here's Iverson. The Doug Moe will fire. This one's going to be off. Lingenfelder battling for the board, and he stepped out of bounds. As you see, he tried to bounce the ball off the leg of Iverson, but Iverson just spread his leg, let the ball go right through. So now the Sioux is dressed in there, traveling green, of course, as was the women's team. Play it in. That ball was off the leg of John Brown and went out of bounds. Brown didn't want to uh, accept that. Went over and talked to the official, not uh, great length. Here's Harris, top of the key, working on McDonald, gets in the lane, puts it up, no good. Big board for Lingenfelder. Outlet Brown, they got a man, it's Winston for it, under the basket, good! Nice play for Johnny Brown on the assist. He led well, and Winsenberg took advantage of it, went high and put it down. And tie it with 17-15 to play in the hand. That'll say something about the speed of Winsenberg filling that lane. He was out like a shot. Tied at four. Moe gives back to Harris. Jack Rabbit starting out in a man-to-man. -man. Actually, they'll leave Lingenfelder primarily in the middle of the lane. Now they get the ball to Harris. He's in trouble in the lane. We'll give it back out front to Moe. Top of the key. Good. Doug Moe. Perhaps the best outside shooter for the Sioux. At 6-2 and a senior. Puts North Dakota on top by a basket at 6-4. Wins it for Bounce inside. McDonald. Back out to Jorgensen. Quick move. Can't get a shot up. Two wins it for the Sioux playing tight man to man. They'll press that offense out as high as they possibly can. Jorgensen on the dribble, guarded by Moe. Babbitt's looking to free somebody. They got Winsenberg. Nice he play. shoots it up and in. Bob Winsenberg has all six of the Rabbit points, and we're tied again at a half dozen each. Working down to the 16-minute mark to go here in the first half. This is Moe. Harris inside. Foul. Winsenberg. Winsenberg nods his head, agreeing. Number 44, Bob Winsenberg. First foul of the contest, 15.56 remaining here in the half. Boy, this is going to be a good one, Tom, if trading baskets the way they have is any indication of the rest of the game. Inbounds, Moe. Quickly inside, trying to move Bakken. Can't do it. Back out to Moe. They'll leave him open for just a second. That's all the time he needs. Four points, Doug Moe. Eight, six to two. Jorgensen on the dribble. Comes up high to Lingenfelder. Lingenfelder and Clawson. What a matchup that is. Jorgensen, great move. Oh. Oh. Well, Jorgensen is first basket. He has moved into the starting spot that Jim Going held for a long time for the Rabbits. He took that place when Paul McDonald moved to a forward position. All right, McDonald can play either. Turn around, Bakken. It will stay. And that was not an easy shot. He had a hand in his face all the way. And the Sioux maintained that two-point lead, 10-8. Jorgensen, high left wing, Brown. Baseline, Winsenberg, Jorgensen. Off to McDonald. He may have walked. Have a look at you. Well, there haven't been a lot of turnovers in this game, but that was a costly one for the Jacks with a two-point deficit now and five minutes into this ball game. They'd like to keep it tight even though they realize that they can add a lot of points along the way. Dave Gunther is seated right next to him, Rod Merriam. We're going to see a lot of him tonight. Last year's Mr. Basketball, for those of you who have to tune in a couple of weeks ago, and we had a televised game from the Dome, and Paris hit, or rather has it go in and out. Clawson will get the foul on the rebound. He's he going to push John Brown all the way back to Hamlet County. He wanted the foul called on McDonald, and you see there, of course, the mustache makes him look a little meaner maybe, but uh, he was not going to take that without a word to the official. 14-41 remaining in the half, 10-8. to eight. The lead belongs to the Sioux, and the Jacks have the ball and a chance to tie it. Talking about Miriam, he played a great game down against the U. Ball tipped away. Law picked up traveling on Iverson. There's Gary Espel, the assistant coach, on his knee there, and Gene Zoke now comes off the bench and wants to talk to his players as the Jacks turned it over on a bad pass. Of course, last night's game a must for the Jackrabbits. Somebody had to knock, uh, knock off the bison. 
talked about in a pregame. Jack were the ones that did it. Here's Winsenberg inside. Lingenfelder oh, lost it. Got it back. It. Threw it up. No good. And Travel. a traveling call is made. Well, the fans here, partisan as you might expect, did not want to accept that call, but uh, Lingenfelder was in the lane quite a while, just is not able to hang on to it. I think he was ready to clear the board. He was also in a real danger of being in the lane too long. Uh -huh. Doug Moe, not to be confused with the coach of the Denver Nuggets, will set sail again. This one won't stay. Big battle for the board. Last cut by Iverson. Iverson uh, has been charging through there. It looked like he might come away with the offensive board for a minute, but he had uh, Winsenberg all over him and not able to get a good handle on it. Knocks it out of bounds. There's the high lob. Too high for Winsenberg. As Jorgensen put that in the air, about 40 feet trying to hit Winsenberg out of the basket was a little too high. The scoring pace has slowed down a little bit. They were hitting about uh, trading turns down the court. Now it's been 10 to 8 for a minute or so. Harris looking inside for Clausen. Can't get it to him. Around the perimeter it goes. Now off to Harris. He likes to work his way in. Reed checks it down to play out of bounds. Langenfelder batted that one up into the fourth row. Steve Langenfelder. Pass made high up top to Harris. To Moe. North Dakota Sioux finished second in the Holiday Basketball Tournament, losing to Augustana. How ironic that has turned out to be. Now it is the Sioux, not the Vikings, battling for the conference lead as Bakken will hit again. He's off to a good start with six of the 12 points the Sioux has scored. 12-8, 13-15 to go first half and the Sioux now in a 2-1-2 with Clawson keeping a special eye on number 5-0. Here's John Brown. Good. Well, it's tough to stop Johnny Brown from out there. He comes uh, from a good line of outside shooters and yeah, uh, has say. done a super job. He had 18 points the other night in a rabbit win. Here's Mo. Took a good long look at it. Didn't take it. Now back to Harris and the Sioux will be patient with it. They have not had an easy shot. Only one shot actually in the uh, six-foot perimeter. Pocket offensive foul. He pushed Phil Jorgensen trying to get the ball into the lane. First foul on Bakken, second team. It's only the third whistle total on fouls for the ball game. One on the jack. So the Rabbits will traverse the hard court in search of a tie. Jorgensen in the high right wing. Deep corner, pass, Brown, across to Jorgensen, 20-footer, no good. Winsenberg, same motion, got it in. Eight points, Winsenberg off to a good start. <laughs> he was all alone. We're tied at 12. Here's Clausen in the corner. Back out front to Iverson. Neither Lingenfeller or Clausen have scored. Big rolling hook shot. From long range, no good by Clawson. Brown out on the dribble. Down to McDonald. Pass in, tipped away. And a foul on Lingenfelder. Lingenfelder rolling through that lane uh, sent Scott Dan Clawson onto his back and sliding out of bounds. That was an, probably an unintentional, obviously, uh, foul. But nonetheless, Ling gets his first. Second team against the Jackrabbits. Sue play it in. 89 to 53. They demolished Augustana last night. Augie did not have a good night, obviously. No, he certainly did. Iverson hits it. That's his first scoring of four. The Iverson, the only remnant left of that 76 77 team they had at North Dakota. He played as a freshman. In fact, started for a while as a freshman, then transferred to Wisconsin Eau Claire, then came back to North Dakota. Brown, good. Oh, and he gets that shooting eye. You know there's almost no limitation on his range. You bet. They're going to use him while he's hot. And he has a good chance to be hot for a long time. 14-14. Harris, top of the key. Both teams doing their damage from long range, interestingly enough. Here's Bakken rolling. Hooks it up. No good. Tip good by Clawson. Nice play. And that's the first scoring for Dan Clawson. Oh, and he just muscled that one in. Good look at Gene Zolk and his assistant, Gary S. Bull. It's not been a season that Gene Zolk would like to remember. They've lost, as we said, six of their eight games have been in 10 points or fewer. And Lingenfelder, the first layup is good. The foul is on Bakken. Nice move by Lingenfelder. Realized he was a little bit too far under to shoot it from the side he wanted to. Instead, came around. 
and got the basket and the foul on Bakken is his second. Official talking to Todd Bakken in the lane uh, before he gives the ball to Lingenfelder to try to complete that three-point play. Lingenfelder's free throw is good and the Rabbits have the lead. That's their first lead of the night. 17-16 with 10.50 to go in the first half. Now the Rabbits will put a little half-court pressure on. Harris has across it. Now tries to weave his way in. Rabbits want to carry the ball call. Up frantically <laughs> off the bench. Every, funny to see one entire section of people going, making a signal for carrying the ball. Well, he, he did a good job. Harris did a good job to get rid of the pressure on him. This is Moe inside pocket. Working on Lingenfelder. Oh, it is Officer. You can tell what the Sioux are trying to do. They're trying to get Lingenfelder in foul trouble. Yep. Taking it down low to work on him. And instead, Bakken now has three, and he is going to take a hasty retreat. John Stonat getting set to come in. Stonat, a very, very interesting story about that young man, 6'8 and a junior, born in Ankara, Turkey. His uh, sponsors at the American School in Turkey were from Laramore, North Dakota. And I imagine they had a hand in his deciding to come to North Dakota to play basketball. McDonald from way outside, good. That was a three-pointer, folks. That was a long shot, you bet. Four of the five starters have scored for the Rabbits, and that is their biggest lead at 3 16 and Dave Gunther is up off the bench. He is calling timeout. With 10 minutes and three seconds to go in the first half of play, North Dakota led for about the first nine minutes of the game. Now it's the Rabbits, 19-16. How's it coming through, all right? My mic is loud as uh, Tom. Yeah, but I can't really hear myself that well. If you can turn this up at all. Okay. If I can hear Thompson, great. Yeah, pretty wise time out, I think, by Dave Gunther. It's about, you played half the half, 10 minutes of the half. It's a good time to take a break anyway, as you see one of the bands, a couple, two, three, four, maybe even a dozen here or so. That about 4,000. But uh, his team had just lost the lead. The Jackrabbits were just beginning to go on a little bit of a roll, and he wasted no time calling timeout. It was 11 to 4 at that spurt. The Jacks were down 12 to 8, and now they lead 19-16 with just 10 minutes and now under going in the first half. We will have a final on the... Augustana game, of course, by the time that you hear this, that game will be long over, but we will have one before the end of this telecast is over. Crucial game down there, Vikings against NDSU. This could be a night for Augie to be back on. Moe off a good screen by Sonat. It's his sixth point. 1918. Ah, it was a fine year. Nine and a half minutes to play. Winsenberg. Extremely high left wing, Jorgensen. And we got an offensive foul on Lanfelder. And I can't hardly believe that he could push Dan Clawson down, but he did. Clawson is big and strong. He might uh, he might come up for an Emmy or two after that performance. Gary Esbolt, the assistant coach for the Jacks, talking to the official as he walks by. Rod Miriam getting set to check in now for the Sioux. The All-Stater from Huron, who went north for college. Shot up no good by Moe. Rebound saved nicely by Iverson, but he was on the line. Tough break. Here comes uh, Rod Merriam. Of course, he was the, one of the best players in the Eastern South Dakota Conference, a tough high school conference in South Dakota, and was named, as you have uh, referred several times, the Mr. Basketball in the state of South Dakota last year. And he's done a lot of playing up there. All, right, all three Mr. Basketballs are in the NCC. Cross a beautiful save, but again, he can't save it. Lawson really playing tight D on Lingenfelder. He is about three quarters fronting him and hoping for some weak side help. So far it's worked. Lingenfelder has not been able to get the ball down low, save once. And that worked for three. There you see Sonat coming over on the weak side to help out on Lingenfelder as Clawson is out on him. McDonald on the dribble, across to Winsenberg. High lob pass. That well, wasn't that high of a lob. <laughs> it was just wide. McDonald was going the other way. 
So the Sioux have a chance to take the lead. This is their second trip down the court with a chance to do that. Eight and a half minutes to play in the first half. Iverson, Miriam, Moe, Sonat. Back out to Iverson. Miriam inside, Clausen, back out Iverson. Shot is no good, and Phil Jorgensen, just about the small fan on the floor, gets the board. Pass inside, tip, going. Boy, Clausen went up there with some intensity to grab that thing down. This is their third try now to take the lead. It's taken about a minute and a half, but uh, nobody scored since the Jacks took a 19-18 lead. Clausen back to Sonod, one hand's no good. Sonod making a foul, coming Reaching up Reaching over top. the back, yep. yep. Came in a little too strong over the back. So that is the first foul on John Sonat. It is the fifth team called against the Sioux. 215 pounds. I don't know if I'd like him hanging over my back too long in a basketball game. Well, he has made a vast amount of improvement since we saw him play as a freshman. There's the lap for Lingenfeld. Good. Nice pass by McDonald. Well, that was a long pass. Paul McDonald has uh, pretty good sights on there. That's fifth point of the game for Lingenfelder. Gives the Jacks a three-point lead, 21-18. Miriam, top of the key, good. Rod Miriam's the kind of a guy who got a quick release. He's awfully difficult to stop. Wonder if she could figure out how to get that on. Put it in your hand, dear. Those <laughs> foam rubber number one. She said a one-point game's not interesting enough. I've got to <laughs> figure out how to uh, work this gadget. Brown across to Jorgensen, inside Lingenfelder, good again. Now Lingenfelder's showing a little more movement inside. He's that, rolling that lane. That looked like a chest maneuver from Brown to, to uh, Jorgensen and right on in underneath the Lingenfelder. That was patterned. Checkmate. That's right. It sure was. Here's Clausen. Thinks he wants a closer shot. He gets it, but he misses. Gets his own board. And he's going to get it. And it counts. And Lingenfelder has got Third three foul. fouls. Uh-oh. That is just exactly what Dave Gunther wanted to happen. Steve Lingenfelder, the old foul bugaboo, coming back to haunt him again. Lingenfelder, uh, a couple of times there, he was just slapping, trying to stop it, and actually there was a situation, was that a continuation move or not? Difficult to, to gather, but the official gave it, and so it's a possible three-point play for Clawson that could tie it. A couple substitutions it now, Clawson does tie the game with his free throw, 23-23. The Jackrabbits are going to call timeout. They're going to have a little bit of different strategy now as Jorgensen is out. Lingenfelder has picked up his third foul. 6.52 to go first half, and we are all tied at 23 feet. Upcoming men's game. Do I have that up here somewhere? Where's the men's game? The men's game. <laughs> Here's some of the things that are going to be coming up in the coming weeks on public television. Our next broadcast for the men's basketball here on public television television in South Dakota next Saturday, February, or Saturday, February 7th. University of Northern Colorado will be at Frost Arena in Brookings for a game against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. You will see the delayed broadcast of that Saturday night, 10.30 Central Time, and uh, that ought to be quite a ball game. Saturday, 10.30, February 7th, UNC and South Dakota State. Now the Jackrabbits set to play it in. They've got Brian Omelet in for Steve Lingenfelder. They have Mike Pajong, the freshman who has really come on strong from Mitchell, is in now. This is Pajong, really sagging off him. McDonald, they're not sagging on him. To Brown, high cross court. Pajong, 20 footer, no good. Clausen, the leading rebounder in the North Central Conference, went up and brought that one down. Inside, great pass by Miriam to Iverson. Miriam looked the defense away and then hit Iverson with a nice pass and the Sioux are back on top by two. Four points for Iverson. By the way, Clawson's averaging 12 rebounds a game. McDonald over to Brown, gets one man in the air, goes cross-court to Pichon, to McDonald. 
the Browns. Two really clogging up the inside. They're also managing to come out first of the wings pretty good. John Brown right down the bottom of the stop. Three in a row from that same location for John Brown. He practically put an X on the court where he shot from all three times. So now the Sioux. We'll be back down the floor looking to take the lead again. Miriam in the same motion pass. Bashar tried to save it, but couldn't. Well, the Sioux's biggest lead has been four, and the Jack's biggest lead has been three. And now we're tied at 538 left in the first half. Here's Sonat in the corner. Moe, Miriam, Sonat, Iverson. Back up top to set it up all over again. We're going to get the 2-1-2. Two, two. Inside Sonat. Turn around, Sonat. Good. Nice Gets play. The glass at him. That's the seventh player for the two to get on the scoring column. 27-25, North Dakota by a basket. Here's Brown again. It is off this time. Rebound slapped high out front. Miriam just about runs one of the cheerleaders into the brass section. Trying to get that ball back, but it'll belong to South Dakota State. Clawson will come out for North Dakota. Very gentlemanly move, however, as he did not push her into the stands. He hung on so she didn't fall down and uh, also kept himself from going out. There's a nice hand for Johnny Brown as he comes out. And Phil Jorgensen will be in to replace it. Mark Jalasic in for North Dakota. Off of the key, McDonald hits it. Four points, Paul McDonald, 27 all. Jalasic, a 6'5 junior out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and he is a big lad. He has the ball on the baseline right now. Miriam up top to Moe. In case you just tuned in, Steve Lingenfelder picked up his third foul with seven minutes to go, and again, it is Sona who has to turn around. He is on the bench for South Dakota State. Brown just got out to get a few instructions. He's coming right back in, my guess for Prashad. Jorgensen, McDonald, back to P.J. from 22. Good! And the Rabbits have been swinging the bell from long range. Both teams actually have hit pretty well, although the Jacks have been out farther. And the score is tied with four minutes to play in the half. 29-29. Free throw line Iverson looking for the give and go. Gives to Mo. He'll shoot it. It's no good. Wensenberg with a big board to Jorgensen. Three on two. Down inside. Beautiful steal by Miriam. Boy, nice play. Now he runs it the other way. Two on two fast break. Miriam gets it off. Iverson on the run. Missed it. Rebound for Sean. For Sean quickly up to Wensenberg. Now they'll slow it down. Miriam stole that the way you were talking about Lester Hayes for the Oakland Raiders with Sikkim on his fingers. That yeah. was supposed to go through him. That pass was, had some velocity on it, too. Three and a half minutes left in the first half, and our score remains tied at 29. McDonald again for oh. long range. Good. Bingo. Boy, and the Rabbits continue to shoot phenomenally from the outside. McDonald has hit three from that same location, just the same as Johnny Brown got his three from up on the other left wing. Boy, North Dakota, you know, you can't feel too badly. You're pressing their offense way outside, and they're beating you with 22, 25 footers. Stolastic in a lane, blocked by Winsenberg, but a foul is called. Who got it, McDonald or Wins? No, I think it's going to be on Sonat. Oh, offensive. It is. Pushing foul on Sonat in the lane. So with 2.58 remaining here in the half, it's a 31-29 lead for the Jacks. They've scored four straight points. John Brown uh, in the ball game for the Jackrabbits now after getting a brief rest. And as you mentioned, Tom, he did come in for Mike Pichon. So with less than three minutes to go, the officials from the bench now are calling the referee over to the bench to get some uh, discussion. No, they wanted him to pick up a pen that they dropped. <laughs> well, that was nice of them. Here's Clawson getting off the bench for the Sioux and getting ready to check back in at the next opportunity. McDonald hurrying the 10 second clock, but not much. Brown down to Winsenberg in the corner. Out front, McDonald. Brown, Winsenberg. Really some battling going on inside between Omlid and Jalapic. McDonald gives off to Brown again. Yeah, a little physical inside. Still is. Jackrabbits could feel fortunate if they could take a lead to the locker room. They've used up about a minute on the clock since they took that two-point lead. There's Brown from his magic spot. Doesn't take it. 
Cross it goes. Jorgensen drives the lane. Wants to get to Winsenberg, but he's fouled. Elastic foul. That Jorgensen, he's kind of a magician with the ball. You don't notice Phil as much as you might some of the others. It's easy to lose him. He's six foot uh, sophomore amidst all the giants. Winsenberg and Lingenfelder and McDonald. At the free throw line, Phil Jorgensen. His free toss is short. There's a look at the sophomore from Hampton, Iowa. Phil Jorgensen. His second one is there. Two out of three from the free throw line tonight for the Jacks. His fifth point of the contest, 32-29. Jacks by three, working our way down to the two-minute mark to go in the first half. Jalasic wants to give to Harris, keeps it instead, and travels with it. There was a situation where Jalasic was run into by both a, one of his own teammates and uh, Phil Jorgensen, who was guarding him, and he moved. I don't know that he, uh, Dave Gunther appreciated the oh, call. He is upset. He is well off the bench. The crowd is screaming, give me a T. Give him a T, give him a T. Now we're going to go over and get a little friendly advice. So sit down. Dave Gunther's not picking it. There it is. And that will put this crowd to his feet. A technical foul on Dave Gunther. I have a feeling he uh, intended that one, Tom. I think he wanted to stir up his boys a little bit. They're going to put Brian McDonald at the free throw line, but I'm sure... Uh, he was talking to watch that develop. He had every opportunity to go back. Well, you had a great shot of him. The discussion with the referee, he <laughs> gave him every opportunity to turn around and go back to the fence, but Gunther didn't do it. Finally, he said, all right, fine, sir. He gave him the upside-down timeout. McDonald, one of the best free-throw shooters in the history of the school, will get two, of course, with a technical being on the fence. Seven points, McDonald. He can give the Jacks their biggest lead. He does. Eight points for McDonald, and that is as close as he's been to the basket for any of his points. It's a 16-foot mark. 34-29. Jackson will get the ball to boot. Now, Winsenberg and McDonald, eight each. Lingenfelder with seven, and John Brown with six. They've uh, spread it around pretty good. Very balanced scoring. McDonald. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Rabbits run some time off now. Brown weaving through the pack. Foul. Miriam trying to fight through the screen, fouls McDonald. That is the first foul on Miriam, and we are into the one and one. And again, uh, the person you might not want to be there for the automatic two, Paul McDonald. Averaging 13 points the ball game. He has had some fine games. He's averaging 13 points a game for all of the games, but he's averaging oh, about 19 a game in the North Central. He was third coming into this week. He has averaged playing over 40 minutes per game, considering overtime. That's right. That's no small feat. He has been sitting out a, a total of only uh, less than three minutes the entire NCC season. He's been an Iron Man. 36-29. Rabbits now by seven. Oh, uh, boy, Iverson was pushed from behind at the free throw line. Rabbits got away with one there. Jorgensen stops, gives to Winsenberg, lost it, got it back, threw it away. Was it touched? Yes. No. Well, they say by Brown. Brown did touch it. None of the Sioux touched it, though. Big John Stonut, all six feet, eight inches of him. Up to take the ball out of bounds. Miriam now with a minute 20. Iverson, right wing. Stonut gives right back to Miriam. Stops falling away for the basket. Good. That is an incredibly difficult shot. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've not seen him before, that's why he was selected Mr. Basketball among all high school athletes last year in South Dakota. He's the boy of Alan Waddell to marry him. He lives down here in the southeast part of town on Kansas Street in Heron. <laughs> Hello, Mom. I'm sure they're here tonight. You can count on it. I know Rod they were uh, at the arena last night when North Dakota played Augustana. 36, 31, 45 seconds left. Two stripped the ball away from McDonald's. Big steal by Aaron Harris. Gene Zell glaring at the official. He thought it was a foul on that one. Well, they're going to want that one shot left, I think, Tom. They're going to take it easy on that patient offense and try to get to within three to the locker room. So here comes the weave. Running through the man-to-man -man offense. 20 seconds left and counting down now. 17 seconds. 15. 
Miriam with the ball. 12 seconds. Being guarded by Brown. What time to start making a move to the basket? 8 seconds. Sodot will shoot it and hit it. Six points for Sodot. Three, two, McDonald at the horn. And it's just a little bit short, but he had a good Close. shot at that one. Boy, we've had an exciting first half of play in a key North Central Conference game from Cross Arena on the campus of South Dakota State. Our halftime score, the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State lead the Fighting Sioux of the University of North Dakota, 36 to 33. We'll be right back with the second half. Back a couple of categories but they're also ahead in one of the dubious categories. Jim, let's look at those first half stats. Well, the field goal percentage for the University of North Dakota, 16 out of 30. They hit 53%. That's not bad. But South Dakota State can 15 of 19 attempts, 79% shooting. That's phenomenal, that especially, from the, especially from the outside. That's really nail-biting when they hit them that far out. They did it with consistency. Free throws, University been there just one time, one for one for 100%. State has missed just one out of seven. 86% accuracy. The rebounding, this is the phenomenal statistic. State leads 14 to 5 on the boards. It's not really been a good night for rebounding for the university. And in the turnovers, that's the one that you said dubious that the state leads in. They've got 11 and 3 on UND. So that's the first half statistics. Notably, 79% shooting for state. They've missed just 4 out of 19 from the floor. Right, and the turnovers balance it out the other way. That takes care of the rebounding advantage, the shooting advantage, and you throw all the stats into a grinder, and it comes out 36-33. It was a seven-point lead at one point, Tom, 36-29. Lingenfelder picked up his third foul, and all of a sudden, down court comes Rod Merriam, gets some help. Uh, who was that that scored those? The Sonats got three field goals late in the first half. That helped everybody out, and now it's a three-point game, 36-33, a real crucial play near the end of that that first half with about 30 seconds left. Paul McDonald lost the ball, went to the middle of the key, and uh, I'm sure that Coach Gene Zolk was very disappointed. He expected a foul to be called. It wasn't. The steal for Harris led to a basket for the Sioux, and it put them instead of five points down, three points down, as they come back to start this second half. Individually in the first half, Paul McDonald had stayed with 10 points. He's the only man on the floor in double figures. Eight for Bob Winsenberg, seven for Steve Lingenfelder, and they're going to get the official playing time. I guess they don't have minutes played listed on the halftime sheet, but I know he's sent out the last seven minutes of the half after picking up his third personal foul. Six points for John Brown, five points for Bill Jorgensen. North Dakota scoring great balance. Six apiece for Todd Bakken and Doug Moe. Five for Dan Clawson. Four for John Sonat, Rod Miriam, and Jim Iverson. And two points for Aaron Harris. And we are set to go. The tip-off for the second half is controlled by North Dakota. They will be traveling left to right on your screen in the second half in their traveling green uniforms. Should say six points for Soda. There was a rejection underneath the basket. Bakken lost it. Headed for the lane. He lost it. So the Jackrabbits starting as they started the game with Jorgensen, Brown, Winsenberg, Lingenfelder, and McDonald. North Dakota also starting as they started the game. Inside Lingenfelder, got a man up in the air, had it partially blocked, hit, lost by Harris, picked up by McDonald's, and we got a foul call. Or a jump ball, Or a Let's jump see. ball, one or the other, what's it going to be? I think they're going to jump it. All right. I thought he pointed at Harris as if to signal a foul. <laughs> well, McDonald's sure thinks it should have been a foul. He's looking into the crowd, uh, trying to get a little sympathy from the crowd. Harris did a good job of getting to it after the ball. In fact, he lost the ball once and got back to tie it up. So the tip up, and it is snapped. Controlled by North Dakota. Actually, McDonald won the tip. He had everybody behind him and tapped it forward. So the Sioux with a chance to get to within one point. They scored four straight. Going you back into the second, uh, right. beginning of the first half, or end of the first half, rather. Pocket is open for 15. He'll get it. Eight points for Todd Bakken, 36-35, a minute into the second half. Jorgensen to Winsenberg on the high left wing, back to Brown. Jorgensen trying to set up Lingenfelder, can't do it, gives it to Winsenberg, to John Brown, underneath McDonald, working, faking, pumping, and we've got what? Foul on Lawson. Lawson, he Boy, does not he like it. He just cannot believe it. 
He was playing about as good as defense as possible inside. Shakes but his head, but he's got a lot of respect for Paul McDonald, and you can understand why if you're defending against him. He's an outstanding basketball player. <laughs> McDonald put on every herky-jerky move he learned from way back playing for the Chisholm Blue Streaks, trying to get that one up. And gets the free throw. He continues his great free throw shooting. He's like a machine from the line. Five in a row from there now in this ball game. Second one is also good. Got a big score on North Dakota State and Augustana just flashed right by. It's got to be late in the game down Augustana there. has the lead over North Dakota uh -oh. State. They tell us late in the game. I don't have the score That's except a, that they're behind. That would be a monumental upset. Lawson in the lane. Gives off to Iverson. Takes one dribble. Now we'll take the shot. Too strong. Tipped up in the air. Finally grabbed by who? Jorgensen comes out of there with it. Six foot sophomore. Ahead to John Brown, lays the leg and throw to go, it counts for the foul, it's a bucket! Uh-oh, boy, I tell you. He could not establish that position inside, and he is buried. He wasn't very pleased. Iverson down on one knee right under the basket, too. Neither one appreciated that call. But the Beautiful Jacks pass. have a chance to go up by six. Beautifully done for Brown to Lingenfelder. Nine points for Steve Lingenfelder. Four personal fouls against Todd Bacca. And we're going to see a lot of John Sonat in the second half. The three-point play completed by Lingenfelder. It is now a 41-35 game. Ten points for Steve Lingenfelder to join Paul McDonald in double figures. Paul's got 12. Including six in a row from the free throw line. Jackrabbits now with what looks like a 2-2-1 zone trap. Still working beautifully, though. Gets the ball to the middle. Now to Aaron Harris. Stops. Fires. No good. Thrown out there for the board. It's got to go in. And it counts. The foul is on Jorgensen. And Phil Jorgensen at six feet tall trying to block the shot of John Sonat. But he reached up. All he got was arm. Sonat is what? Uh, six, six, eight, something like that. Six, eight, and a junior. He's got eight points from the bench. He has really helped keep North Dakota in this game. In fact, if he makes it, he'll be the leading scorer for the Sioux in this ball game. And he does. Nine points for John Sonat. 41-38. Pressure on Lingenfelder. Has to muscle his way to McDonald. Up ahead to Winsenberg. To Jorgensen. High cross court, John Brown. That's just his range, but it's not going to go this time. To Sue battling for the ball. Lawson says, all right, Aaron, I'll let you have it. Harris now with McDonald all over him. Bounces back to Moe. Around the perimeter, Harris penetrates, shot way short, rebound stole it away. Brown stole it from Clawson, and a foul is called on Iverson. John Brown just went right between Clawson and Iverson. They had the position, looked like they were going to get the offensive board and a chance to score, but John Brown went right between them and was able to come up with that ball. 41-38, it is the third team foul on North Dakota. Jackson have committed one. And Iverson gets his, uh, what, that's the first so right. far, Tom? First foul. See, we've got to get the Jim Iverson story in here before this ball game is <laughs> over. Yeah, you'll get it. Promised everybody we'd have it. Turn around, Lingenfelder put a little too hard. Tap for the Sioux. They cannot save it. I think uh, Lingenfelder's shot was partially deflected as it went on the way. A little flat. So the Sioux will play it in. Oh, the Jacks will play it in, rather. Paul McDonald. And just a three-point lead right now. They went by as much as seven, trailed by as much as four. You get that feeling it's going to be that close all the way? <laughs> you just have that feeling. John Brown on the dribble gives well, to Lingenfelder. Especially if Augustana beats North Dakota State, that would be uh, a big win for whichever team wins here tonight. It would really help their standings in the NCC, obviously. Underneath wins it, Berg gives to Lingenfelder, and he rams it home. makes it 43-38, and Winsenberg set him up beautifully for that one. Got everybody off their feet. Steve came sliding in, and Winsenberg puts it right down on him. And a foul on Winsenberg away from the ball. Against Clawson, apparently. Now they're moving a little bit under there. Boy, they're doing some battling underneath. Second foul on Winsenberg. Still pointing at himself. Me? Well, it's kind of hard when push comes to shove. They'll do both. Yeah. <laughs> Mole goes high in the air to grab that one down. Aaron Harris to Mole again. Entity, Sonat, rolling hook shot, no good. Clawson with the board. Nobody going to stop him. He's going to score. 
You've got to almost let him have that, otherwise a three-point play. That's what happened to Lingenfelder on his third foul in that first half. You saw Lingenfelder just back off and just to say, all right, Big Dan, you got the board, you earned this one. Underneath McDonald will hook it up, and it's good! Well, I have never seen the hook shot at McDonald's repertoire, but there's always the first time. He's watching Plasson or Sonat. Besides, I can do that one, too. 14 points for McDonald. Underneath Sonat. Falls away. No good. Tip try, no good. And Jorgensen comes out of there with it. On the dribble. Goes behind the back. Gives to McDonald. Cross court wins it for He's got time to set up, and he will miss it. Rebound Aaron Harris. The two on a run. They Five, do. Four on three. And we have got an offensive foul on Aaron Harris. Uh-oh, and he's unhappy about that one. Boy, you saw his reaction. Take a look at his face. Whoa, Aaron Harris is displeased. Well, and we got a timeout on the floor. It's wanted by North Dakota. Dave Gunther is going to have a couple words with the official. 15 42 to go in the game. It's 45 for the Jackson, 40 for the Sioux. Okay. All right. When was it last year? <laughs> Come on, Rob, don't run. What did he do, get up? Well, we're back here at Frost Arena, and Dave Gunther has had his pizza. There's Rob Hayner, former Jack Rabbit standout, who's in the crowd tonight. Enjoying now, the ball game. Home area in Omaha. He was intense watching their pregame warm-ups. Tom, I had a chance to watch the camera. Steve got the camera right on him, and uh, it was an intense Rob Hainer who was watching the warm-ups prior to this tip-off. Now the crowd begins to pick up the clapping chant. Here's John Brown. Took a look at Lingenfelder underneath. Decided not to. McDonald will. Good! What a game he's having. 16 points for Paulie. McDonald's getting them from inside out, free throw line everywhere. 16 for him. He's putting together two great back-to-back -back nights in crucial games for South Dakota State. Had 23 last night in that big win over North Dakota State. Harris will let her fly no good. He's fouled by McDonald. Foul is the first foul on Paul McDonald. Now that's uh, helpful. You need a playmaker like him, and of course he's moved from his customary guard position to playing forward, which has allowed Phil Jorgensen to move into the lineup. There's Gene Salker. Yes, well, we haven't seen him sit down all night, have no. we? Well, no, I don't think they saved a chair for him. I think uh, <laughs> he's got a knee pad there. Harris's free throw is good. Three points for Aaron Harris. Aaron Harris hit one of the first field goals of the ball game, and that's the first time he's scored since then. It's been almost 20 minutes. This one is in and out no good. Now McDonald gives to Winsetberg. Up to Jorgensen. They'll let him shoot it. He misses. Jack's a little colder in this second half. Out of bounds. Last touch by Brown. Clausen put a big paw up. Tried to swat that thing. What he did was swat it off John Brown and out of bounds. So Harris comes up. Two trailing by six. Penetrate. Shoot. Short. No good. Ball tapped up in the air. Jackson got a break going. They've got it ahead to John Brown. Jorgensen screens the defense. And Brown scores. Eight points for Johnny Brown. And an excellent job by Jorgensen to screen the defender <laughs> away. Yeah, that can be an assist for Phil, though he never touched the ball. Good job. 14-36 remaining in the game. Jacks by eight. Biggest lead of the night. Doug Moe gets it. Well, Mo hasn't scored for a while either, Tom, but that's his fourth from off that side. One very fine shooter is Doug Mo. He won the Clem Littage Hustle Award last year, and he is also a pre-med major. Mm. Brother plays at the Concordia College. Right. Ling and fell there again! Boy, that was a power stuff. He took the backboard and just took it. 14 points for Steve Lingenfeller. Nothing. He and McDonald have 30 together. Nothing can fire up a crowd like a good, strong dunk, and you can smell that one. Shot by Sonod, it won't stay. Whoa, Lingenfeller! Like an avenging angel flying through the lane and pulling the board down. An eight-point lead for the Rabbits. Jorgensen gives to Winsetberg, and he threw it away. I don't think uh, Lingenfeller was expected to get that, and I don't think Steve was quite ready for it as the pass from Winsenberg was right into the hand of Doug Moe. 
Dave Gunts are up off the bench saying, slow it down, slow it down. Lofton working on Winsenberg in the lane, puts it up. He spent too much time yep. in the lane. Made the basket. That was a, for Jack fans, that was a narrow call because they thought for a minute it might be a three-point opportunity because he made the basket. And a possible fourth foul on Lingenfeld. That's right. It was not to be, however. Jack Rabbit fans breathe a sigh of relief. The three-second violation, and the Jacks, with 13 and a half minutes to play in the game, could go up by 10. Jorgensen, Brown, Winsenberg. Drop to Brown, underneath to Lingenfelder, working on Clausen. Clausen's not about to give that baseline. Gets it back out to Brown. Up top, Winsenberg. To McDonald, here's that rolling shot again. We got a foul. Foul is called on Iverson, is it? Sonod, I believe. Let's wait and see. Yep. Foul is called on John Sonod, number 45. That is his third. Well, he's had lots of opportunity uh, coming in and to replace Dan Quasson. He's picked up nine points, and now his third foul. 13 minutes and three seconds to go in this game. McDonald. Seven in a row from the free throw line to go with five field goals. It's like he's shooting them in the backyard. 52-43, he can give the Jacks their biggest lead if he can get this one. He's got uh, it. Of course. A 10-point lead, 18 points for Paul McDonald. That's like a gimme two-inch punt for Jack Nicholas when he goes to the free throw line, it seems like. Rod Marion back in the game now, number 15. Jim Going setting, getting set to come in for the Jacks. Moe again from the corner. Hits 10 points for Doug Moe, the senior from East High School in Duluth, Minnesota. Do try a little double teaming. Brown lays it up for Lingenfelder. Has to get rid of it back to McDonald. Across to Brown. He is open from 17 feet. No good. Tip by Lingenfelder. Ball knocked out of bounds by Sonat. Going is coming into the ball game now, and they're going to give uh, Lingenfelder a break with 12 and a half minutes remaining. Boy, and the crowd very crowd. appreciative of the game that he has played. They are up and standing for Steve Lingenfelder. He had a couple of dunks in his half. That rocked this crowd. McDonald gives to Winsenberg. Up, no good. Going, tip, no good. Family for the board. He's going to get it. He lost it to Miriam. Jack Rabbit, the partisans wanted a foul. Well, it's still an eight-point game. Psychologically, that was an important one for the Sioux. But now, what is it going to be? A uh, foul on McDonald. Yeah. Looks like it might have been offensive on Swanson, but McDonald draws it. That's the second on Paul. And every time McDonald has picked up a foul, somehow he's ended up on the ground. <laughs> he slipped. Kind <laughs> of an saying. unusual spot to pick <laughs> up fouls. 12 minutes, 14 seconds to play in the game. The Jacks' biggest lead, 53 to 45. Bowes set to play it inbound. Well, except for Lingenfelder's three fouls, nobody's in any real trouble for the Jacks. Inside, turn around, Iverson, no good. Kept alive by Clausen. He's going to get fouled. He was hung on. Is it Brown? Somebody hung on him. There was a bunch of them in there. Not a bad foul for John Brown. It's yep. his first, and that would have been an easy two for Dan Clawson. Yeah, he's going to have to earn them now. That's uh, the exception to the foul problem, of course, when you don't want to give him the three-point play, but John fouled him before he could get the shot away, and so he's going to have to earn his two points. He literally hung on to his arms for dear life, and the thing about it is Clawson just about picked him up and took him <laughs> to the basket with him. What happens if an opposing player goes through the bucket? Dan Clawson, a transfer from Creighton, and what a valuable addition he has been to this Sioux team. That's his eighth point of the ball game. He's well below his seasonal scoring average of 18. Lingenfelder, after a brief rest, is going to come back in for stage. And going is going to come out. Well, you can see by the sweat glistening on his shoulders just how hard uh, Dan Clawson has played this contest. He gets his ninth point with 12 minutes to play, and it's a six-point deficit now for the Sioux. Sioux have it down to six. Lingenfelder gets it to Brown. Now they got a three-out, two-fast break. Jorgensen stop. Shot good. Jack Rabbit turned the pressure into points. Seven, Seven points for Bill Jorgensen. 55-47, to go. Clawson, a little bit out of his range there. Inside Sona, that's well within his, and he'll hit it. 11 points now for John, and he becomes the leading scorer for the Sioux off the bench. He has played very well tonight. Again, the six-point lead, 55-49. McDonald on the dribble. Catch the baseline waters. Decides it's a bit too hot for him there. Jorgensen underneath. Brown back up top to McDonald. 
Back to John Brown. Bowles going to have to come out on him a little bit, respecting his shooting. He's missed his last three, however, from there after making three in a row. McDonald working, gets by one man, gets close to the foul. Him. And he's on the floor on again. On the floor again. McDonald's on the floor, floor, whether he's fouled or fouling. Whether he is the fouler or the foulee, huh? Yeah? Say, boys, don't do that. Now you're on CY TV. <laughs> they must be Jackrabbit fans and feeling their oats here a little bit. <laughs> Mark Delastic, the enforcer, is going to come back in for North Dakota. Clawson comes out. 11 0 picked up left. his third foul there. And again, guess who's at the line? Mr. Automatic. Watch well, us put the whammy on him now. We have him for 18 points. Yep. Free throw is no good. I told you. Why do you mention that? Put the whammy on him. Every time you say <laughs> something about it, he doesn't miss many. And he's eight out of nine. Now he's nine out of ten. He is now. Let's see, he was 40 of 45 going into last night. I'm not sure exactly what he did from the line last night, but he is right up there near the top in free throw shooting percentage. He has shot way more free throws than anybody else, too. Here's Mo gunning. Good! It counts! And Jorgensen's going to get the foul. That's 12 points for Doug Moe, and none of them have been easy. Jorgensen's outside shooting, and the inside play of Sonata have been the difference in keeping North Dakota close. Those two have 23 of the 51 points. But they've gotten some help. Bakken with eight, Clawson with nine. Quinzenberg comes back in. The Jacks have also had pretty balanced scoring. 19 for McDonald, 14 for Lingenfelder, 8 each for Brown and Winsenberg, and 7 for Jorgensen. And Moe's got the three-point play. 13 points for him now, and the Sioux are back to within four. Well, moments ago, it could have been a 10-point contest. Jorgensen up quickly to Winsenberg. And the Jackrabbits are going to call a timeout. With 10 minutes and 44 seconds to go, it is everything we expected and more. South Dakota State leading the University of North Dakota, 56 to 52. He should have shot at number 35. I got to tell my Jim Iverson story before I butt. <laughs> North, North Dakota. Dakota green. They're the ones in green. If he's in, I don't even know if he's in now. <laughs> well, we need to give some credit to some of the people who have made this ball game uh, possible, as well as uh, Tom and I, and that's the camera people. And we've been talking about them. Uh, throughout this ball game, but Paul Thorstenson and Pete Royer and Steve Szymanski, we appreciate the camera work, and it's been difficult in this fast-moving contest. Of course, Pete Eggert, our director, has been keeping things moving, and we appreciate all of that. Jerry Jorgensen on the audio. Folks ought to spend a little time behind the scenes sometime. It's awful easy for us to sit up here and do it. We, we need, to mention that, need to mention that now, because I'm sure this game is going to go right down to the wire, and uh, good intentions notwithstanding, we may miss it. Now the North Dakota Sioux cheerleaders pick up the chant a little bit across the way. Winsenberg is open. His shot is good. First point of the second half. Tenth point of the game for Bob Winsenberg. And Ron Lynch comes bearing news. 5,168 in attendance there in the Port Classic. So not falling away. This time it won't stay. McDonald with a rebound. Thought he was coming with the North Dakota State Augie score. Nice play for Jorgensen. He almost lost that one. Lingenfelder rolling the lane. Good! Lingenfelder with nine points this half, 16 for the game. 60-52, just past the 10-minute mark. The Sioux with Mo taking a screen from Soda, shooting no good. Now the Sioux are becoming a little bit cold for the field. Brown leads the fast break, three on two. Jorgensen had Lingenfelder for a moment, and we got what? Three, three seconds. seconds. Called on Lingenfelder. Hmm. Well, he uh, must have pitched a 10 in there. The official very definite about the call. 9.45 remaining. Here's Dave Gunther. He was an All-American at the University of Iowa. Team captain, team most valuable player in the late 50s for the great Iowa teams of that period. Harris with a clean shot oh, to the nice hole, play. and he's got it. Five points for Aaron Harris, Tom, and again, he's, uh, that's his first field goal since the opening minutes of the contest. He's not gone to the basket well. In fact, he's not really been very evident, even defensively. Jorgensen 
Now to McDonald, now to John Brown. He will fire. He will hit. Well, he began well around in a bit of a scoring drought for him. Fourth player to go into double figures for the Jacks, led by McDonald's 19. Again, the eight-point lead for State, 62-54. The high lob can't hang on. Is Bakken who checked back in during the timeout. He's not quite warmed up enough yet for that kind of play. Jorgensen took a good long look at that one, decided not to. Now here's McDonald. Look at the double team low on Winsenberg. Now the double team, when the ball comes on this side, will come to Lingenfelder. Double team in the low post. McDonald looks for somebody in the corner, and Brown will uh, get in there and get it for him. McDonald will fire. Good! Boy, what a night. What a night. 21 points for McDonald. Still eight and a half minutes to go, and the Rabbits have equaled their biggest lead at 10 points. Well, you can see the, I don't know what the capacity is here, but over 5,100 people, and they're all appreciative of the way things are going tonight, no matter who they're, whose side they're on. Aaron Harris misses Brown with the board. We've got a four on two fast break. He gets the target down, and he's good! Jorgensen hits on a beautifully designed fast break. For Bill Jorgensen, it is his ninth point. Biggest lead, a dozen. The crowd will rise to their feet. Dave Gunther will call a timeout with 8.03 to go. The Jack Rabbit machine is rolling. They lead the Sioux by a dozen, 66 to 54. There's the, uh, what's his name? Iverson. Guy with his short hair. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you got him from the wrong camera. Get him from <laughs> above. Oh, where do you get You don't have a camera here. Get one from the uh, crow's nest if you can. <laughs> right, you see the guy in the North Dakota huddle with his short hair there, number 35. His name is Jim Iverson. He only has four points in the game tonight. It's not scored in the second half. Got an interesting story about his hometown. Soldiers Grove, Wisconsin is where he's from. Seven times in the last 60 years, Soldiers Grove has been flooded. Well, they talked about moving the to town to higher ground, talked about it, talked about it. They flooded again this year, so they moved the entire town of Soldiers Grove, Wisconsin, where that young man is from, all 611 people up to higher ground. They waited to... that in uh, this week's issue of Time Magazine. Waited for you there Still before they put it away. Time. Doug Moe with Brown all over it. Misses. Foul on the board. Lingenfelder, four. It's on Steve Lingenfelder, I think. Let's Please. wait and see. We haven't had a... Yep, 5-0, says the official. That is four on Steve Lingenfelder. And crucial with 7.52 to play in the game and a 12-point lead for the Jacks. And they are going to bring in Oblet and save Lingenfelder for the last couple minutes. Well, now's not a bad time to rest the big guy with a dozen-point lead. He's got 16 points. That's well below his season average of 27. Last night he scored uh, 17 points and was out on foul. You see, Gene Zulk is no small man himself at about 6'5", and Lingenfelder just towers over yeah. him at 6'9". Last night had a scout from the Detroit Pistons here looking at Steve Lingenfelder. There have been several professional scouts eyeing him as we eye Todd Bakken. His free throw won't settle in. Rebound to Brian Ablett. The NCC Academic Player of the Year is Brian Ablett with a straight four points in pre-med. I think uh, Ron Iverson was telling me that uh, the entire basketball team has a great point average of 3.1 this season, collectively. Unbelievable. Brown penetrates, gives off beautifully. Ablett misses it. It goes out of bounds. Belongs to State, but uh, Omelette was too open. Beautiful play by Brown. Brown penetrated, did his job, and Omelette missed the gimme. The young lady you just saw on your screen a moment ago was from uh, the University of North Dakota, looking uh, hopeful, and yet time running out on the two with a 12-point deficit and seven and a half minutes to play. Omelette has problems getting it off to Brown, now gets it back, get rid of it, that away. Well, that's a sign of a team that's winning, of course, when you can do something like that and still retain possession. That's exactly what the Jacks did. Jack Rabbit's going to run a little time off the clock now, spread the offense out, go for a real good shot, playing North Dakota's game, but the Sioux will steal it. Bad pass. Ahead it goes. Iverson, Brown thought he walked. Clawson gives to Bakken. Clock now left at seven minutes to go. Bakken oh, spins. Nice a beautiful guy. move, and he hits it. He goes into double figures, Tom. That's the third North Dakota Sioux to hit that mark. 66-56, a 10-point lead for State. Good 
a dribble behind his back by Jorgensen to get around Harris and beat the time clock. Here's McDonald back out to Jorgensen. State's going to call a timeout. I think they want to put the ball in somewhat of a freeze, but they're not exactly how they're sure they're how they want to do it. So they're going to spend a timeout to talk that over. 6:38 to go in the game. State has a 10-point lead over North Dakota. All right. Got it. Should we explain why we don't have the USC State game on? I'm sure there are a lot of people wondering about it. Why don't I go through? <laughs> I'll go through this, and then you take that. Again, a reminder here on your South Dakota Public Television that you'll be watching on February 7th, a Saturday, a men's game between the University of Northern Colorado and South Dakota State on South Dakota Public TV, 10.30 p.m. Central Time on a Saturday night. Then on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day doubleheader. Women's game at 9, Nebraska and USD. And the men's game, Morningside and USD. That's on February 14th, 9 and 10.30 p.m. that Saturday. UNC and USD, February 21st for a third men's game. Jack Rabbits have decided to bring Steve Lingenfelder back in the game. Six and a half minutes to go. To explain, too, we are not having the State U game on. From the Dome Saturday, McDonald gives it off, but we had a foul ahead of it. Who's it on, Harris? Well, it looked like we had a double foul, maybe. Maybe somebody playing a little too tight on each other. Here. Well, we'll wait and see. I, he pointed like jump ball, which would only indicate to me it's got to be a double foul. Well, we'll see here in a moment. Yep, yes. double foul. Harrison Jorgensen, get it? Okay, battling away from the ball. 10-point lead for the Jackrabbits, 6 minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the ball game, and I'll tell you, a lot of things can happen between now and then. We're waiting for that Augustana-North Dakota State score, and uh, right now, Tom is trying to come up with that for us. Boy, it's the barn burner in the arena. 81-80, North Dakota State is leading in overtime with two and a half minutes to go. Boy, they went into another overtime. Boy, that would be like Christmas a couple weeks late. For State, they give off to Lingenfelder. He's fouled, and that's all for Bakken. Bakken picks up his fifth foul. He had to come back and help out on Lingenfelder. He heads immediately to the shower. Yeah, he knew that was it for him. Via the bench. He course. leaves with six minutes and 12 seconds to go to Todd Bakken. He scored 10 points tonight for the Sioux. Well, that could help the Jackrabbit cause, although remember, Steve Lingenfelder is also playing in foul difficulty with four, along with 16 points. The Jacks have four players in double figures, and Phil Jorgensen almost there with nine. There's Todd Bakken. There's Steve Lingenfelder. He's at the free throw line to shoot one and one. It's up. It's good. Lingenfelder has 10 points in his half, 17 for the game. And he's matched last night's scoring. Senior from Thomas Jefferson High School in Bloomington, Minnesota. Second one is good. He, of course, transferred to State from Minnesota. And Lingenfelder's going to get a little rest now. Going is going to come in. Again, a fine round of applause for Steve Lingenfelder. He started a couple games for the Gophers, and Michael Thompson set out the uh, suspension for the ticket-selling thing that went on up there, seven or eight games or whatever the suspension was. Boy, speaking of ticket-selling, the Super Bowl really has got a lot of that, haven't they? Big rolling hook by Clawson. He has been held pretty well at check. He now has 11 points. We're saying we're not having the State U game on next week. Inside going, stop, and it's fouled. Up he travels. 68-58. What's the reason? That's part of the North Dakota girls game. Well, I don't know if I could give you an exact reason. I guess that the University of South Dakota just does not want to put it on. And uh, if, you have any, if you have any comments, drop them a line, folks. Not our fault. Don't blame us. So our next game is February 7th, UNC in South Dakota State. Here at Frost Arena, it'll uh, be on at uh, 1030 Central Time on that Saturday night over your South Dakota public television stations. And uh, what a state cheerleaders are. I would dearly love to be in the dome for that game. Iverson set to play it in. Does so to Sonat. Sonat into Clausen. Oh. Another big rolling hook shot. This time it won't go, and he's going to get a foul. His fourth. Uh-oh. So now Lingenfelder and Clausen 
each with four fouls. Bakken has already departed. Ten points can evaporate quickly in five and a half minutes. There's no question about that, as we saw in the women's game preceding this. One, if you haven't heard it, by the uh, South Dakota State women. I don't remember the final score, but 71. it was a pretty big score, although it came to within nine points late in the ball game. UND lost it. Free throw by Winslowberg. No good. John Brown over the board. Lost it. Iverson tries to save it. And, and we got a foul called on Brown. Trying to get it back. I think he tried to trip up Miriam. <laughs> As well. Miriam was scurrying for the ball, Miriam came over to offer a hand. Brown says, no thanks. I'm not right, quite ready to get up yet. Is that only his first foul? No, it's got to be more foul. than... Yeah, the board shows one, but I know he got another one earlier on Fawson. Todd Merriam will be at the free throw line. Going is out now. Lingenfelder comes back in. For Jim Going, it's been like a revolving door tonight. In for a minute, and out. In for a minute, and out. If that had been Tom Maxwell, he would have said Going is gone. But uh, <laughs> I, you noticed how I ran away from that. Yes, one. I see. You set me up good for that one. <laughs> Merriam with his first point of the second half. He has five for the game now. Second one short, rebound, Clausen in the lane, shot is no good, tip, try, throw down, no good, finally Lingenfelder takes control of the middle. Brown quickly ahead to McDonald, nobody's going to pick him up, Paul will fire, good! Well, he's matched last night's performance now, Tom, with five minutes to play, that's his 23rd point of the night. 23 points for Paul McDonald, Harris penetrates and hits it. He is an excellent penetrator, he can get that ball inside. His fifth point of the half, seven on the game for Aaron Harris. 70-61, we just passed the five-minute mark to go. Here's John Brown, taking it at baseline, lays it back for Lingenfelder, has to do a little work to get control of it. <laughs> Crowd applauds his uh, dribbling. Jorgensen lays it down in the corner for Brown. Inside, McDonald gives it back instead. Back to Lingenfelder, he got close it up, and oh, did he take a nasty spill. Lingenfelder got Clawson up in the air, and Clawson really took a hard spell. You and, could hear that thump. And Rod Merriam is restraining him, if you can believe it. Rod Ooh. is only about 5'10". Clawson might have the feeling that Lingenfelder took him for a ride on that one. Got him up, and it just kind of spun him around a little bit. In any event, that should be it for Clawson. He is not uh, pleased, Boy, I can guarantee you. Boy, you can hear that thump all the way to Watertown. He's gone. He rode on his back for quite a while, and again, uh, Lingenfelder realized Clausen is just too big to ignore, and he knew he was there. And even though uh, Steve Lingenfelder is also very big, he wasn't going to be trying to go head to head with him because Ling also has four fouls, and he didn't want to be charging. So he was turning, I think, trying to get out of the way and get a clear shot at the bucket, and that's what caused the foul. Not that on Lingenfelder, on Clausen. Still murmuring about that. There's Clausen. <laughs> that's got to hurt. He came down flat on his back. Well, that's got to hurt him, boy. I'll tell you, they've lost Bakken and Clawson. They're big rebounders. The two of them uh, have averaged 32 points a game and 20 rebounds. Lingenfelder misses the free throw. Jalassic in there to get the rebound. Gives to Miriam. The Sioux now in need of a basket or two here. They're hoping to get back into the game. They don't want to wait too long. Falling off Alice Iverson, no good. Lingenfelder almost tipped it in. Sold out, got it, and scored. Well, that was a break for the two that time. Persistence, persistence. 13 points for John Sonat, 70-63. He's the leading scorer. Well, he and Doug Moe with 13 each to lead the Sioux in scoring. Now the Jackrabbits are going to run through the offense. We're coming up on the four-minute mark. Bill Jorgensen in trouble. Gives to Winsenberg. As it knocked out a bounds foul on Aaron Harris. Well, they got to try something like that again at this point in the ball game, Tom. That's the third foul on Aaron Harris, but they really desperately now need to get the ball back. A seven-point deficit, and they need the momentum on their side. Not so much so, obviously, they need the points, but psychologically, they need to find out that they need to feel that they can come back with their two big men, Clawson and Bakken, on the bench with fouls. Winsenberg hits the free throw. That's 11 points. He's just a couple off his game average, 13. And he has a dozen. And the Jackrabbit lead now is 9, 72 to 63. Past the four-minute mark. Miriam. To Iverson. Way short, no good. To Sue save it right into the hands of Jorgensen. Now he'll go behind the back, trying to elude Aaron Harris, up to Brown out of Winsenburg. Laid across court for McDonald. Took a look. Decided that discretion is the better part of valor. Three and a half minutes left in the game. 
This is McDonald on July 6th. Oh, what? Now, Lingenfelder, he missed the stuff. Well, he had a couple Somebody of people on Somebody got a hand on, on the ball. If not, he'd have brought the house down again. Harris off balance, way short again. The Sioux not being very selective now at a key point in the game. They're going to be getting much better shots than that. I think that Dave Gunter agrees with you, Tom. He's off the bench. Of course, he's had a sour look most of the night, so I don't know if that was more sour than others. Down by nine points. you got to hope for a little bit better shot at the hole than that. Jorgensen penetrates left hand. Whoa! Beautiful play. What a great move by Phil Jorgensen. He goes into double figures. The fifth player for the Jacks to go into double figures tonight. And the Sioux points. have called a timeout with two minutes and 54 seconds to go. The Rabbits will look like a comfortable 11 points, 74. The 63 lead, we're coming right back. Nice move, beautiful. That's Jorgensen. He's going to be a great one. Look at this, 11, 10, 23, 12, 18. <laughs> In fact, if Harris keeps going to the basket, he could get into double figures and have 10 players. There's a look at the fans on their feet, standing, cheering along with a school song. The Jackrabbits have opened up a 74 to 63 lead. And the last couple trips down the floor, the Sioux have not been wise in their shot selection. And in this end, what could prove to be a very big play in the game. Jorgensen spread the offense out. Nobody really fully picked him up, and he left-handed it up and in off the glass. When Dave Gunther called timeout immediately. Five players for the Jackson double figures. Jorgensen with 11, Brown with 10, McDonald 23, Winsenberg 12, and Lingenfelder 18. That's pretty hard to guard. Here's Miriam from the top of the key. No good. Winsenberg with the board. Again, they did not use the good shot selection, although Rod Miriam's a good outside shooter. He's not been in doing that kind of shooting, so he's got to be cold from out there. John Brown gives to Lingenfelder, stops, maneuvers, scores. And the Rabbits are throwing wood on the fire now. 20 points for King Ling. 76-63, shot is no good, foul. As Brown. J.B., John Brown will pick up the foul. Third foul against John Brown. Might have heard a little editorial comment there underneath the... There's Johnny Brown. Speaking of being underneath the... Uh basket where is our super fan Craig Dershide I haven't seen him oh they had him on before oh did they I always North Dakota State has held off Augustana in overtime to beat the Vikings 86 to 84 I'll tell you Lady Luck is riding in the back seat of the North Dakota State bus they picked up a big win down at Morningside very similarly free throw by Moe's good one of them anyway, 76-64. North Dakota understandably pressuring the inbounds. Now we get a three-on-one across the wins at Berg. No good, yes it is. I spoke too soon as the ball looked like it was coming out. 10, 12, 14 points for Bob Winsenberg. Aaron Harris, baseline, Lingenfelder tries to block, made Harris put it up too high, Jorgensen with a rebound. And we've got a foul called on Jalassic. His second foul. So the 78-64 score, things beginning to look a little bit rosier for a five and two mark for the Jackrabbits in the NCC. This will, if uh, the score should hold, as the free throw by Jorgensen is good. North Dakota U would go to four and two. North Dakota State is at five and one. They'll be on top of the conference depending how Morningside did a UNO tonight. Bill Jorgensen gets them both. Would leave the Jacks a half game out despite what Morningside does. And right. if Morningside should lose, the Jacks would be all alone in second place, one half game behind uh, North Dakota State. Jacks might have been in first place tonight if Morningside loses, but uh, not to be. So not is fouled at the free throw line. That one's on McDonald. That's the third on Paul McDonald. Well, with exactly two minutes to play in this basketball game. In the preceding contest, I don't know if you were counting or not, but about 21 minutes it took from the two-minute mark to the end in the women's game, won by South Dakota State. I remember it well. And I'll tell you, now with the Jacks up by 16, this has gone just the other way. They have a narrow win, just like going earlier, and now they're right down to the, to the wire, and they've got a big margin. Don Stonot has had a good night. 
He and Moe with 14 points each to lead the Sioux in scoring. Now 15 for Sonat. John Sonat has 15 points. That comes on a 5.3 average. That doesn't hurt anything. 80-66. Jorgis the drive. Shoots again and scores. That's he 15. is not a bit of play to take that ball to the hole. That's 10 points in the second half, Tom. Boy, and you work like crazy on one end of the floor to get it. Jorgensen comes right back and scores a layup on you. Harris driving, giving off. He was fouled on his way. Who was it? Winsenberg. Winsenberg. Third foul on Bob Winsenberg. Well, remember, it's Super Sunday tomorrow. We hope that uh, wherever you are, wherever you're going, you will drive carefully and cheer for Philadelphia. No. <laughs> now, we've already given our picks for the Super Bowl. I want Philadelphia to win, but I got the sneaking suspicion that Oakland, as we said in the girls' game, is a team of destiny. It's going to be close. Aaron Harris now has eight points, Tom, and nine, and if he gets one more, that'll put ten players total in double figures. That's a pretty healthy margin, I'd say. 82-68 with a minute 40 to go. Now the Jackrabbits are going to hang on and shoot free throws for the rest of the night. McDonald. They're looking to get Lingenfelder open underneath. He is dangerously wide open. And if he can get another dunk, this place will come down. Lingenfelder has the ball on the way. Now goes back out front to Jorgensen. He's fouled by Miriam. Rod reaching for the ball and did not necessarily want to foul. I know you see Mr. Basketball in South Dakota High School circles last year when playing for Huron High School. What caused him to go out of state? Tom, you had a chance to talk to Rod? Well, I... I think way back in high school, he kind of liked the style that Dave Gunther uses at North Dakota. I do not think, honestly speaking, he was heavily recruited by the South Dakota schools. We've got a rebounding foul, I do believe. What do we have? Well, I don't know what it was. It was a two-shot foul is what it was. They gave him two on that. Well, Doug Moe comes out of the ball game. And a couple of changes here for the Sioux. Dwayne Morris has come in. And also Steve Kahn. Dwayne Morris, number 11 at one time, was the starter. Hey. UNO in overtime. Well, 350 to go in overtime. Leading Morningside by six. 70 to 64. So if Morningside loses, that puts the... Uh, Jack Rabbits in second all by themselves. Yeah. Jorgensen's second one is good. Fine night for Phil. 16 points for Phil. Getting a chance to get back into the starting lineup. Now all we're going to do is decide a final score. Shot by Aaron Harris is good. Two, four, six, eight, nine, eleven points for Aaron Harris. Five players on each side and double figure scoring. Very balanced on both ends. And there's a traveling, traveling call. Traveling call, yeah. Here comes another change for Dave Gunther's lineup. He brings in Mark Thiessen from right. Elgin, Illinois. He's 6'11". Just a sophomore. Sonat comes out. Shooting is Dwayne Morris. No good. Lingenfelder rebound. Outlet to Brown. Brown is going to try to lay it up for Winsenberg, but it is stolen by Dwayne Morris. Here comes Morris on the dribble. Gives to Harris. He drives baseline. Gets in close and scores. So he's going to pick up a bunch here down the stretch. 83-72. Jack Rabbits losing the basketball as... Brown. John Brown says, what do you got to do to get a foul in this league, Coach? Aaron Harris scores. It's going to count, and the foul is going to be called on, well, let's see who it's on. It is on number 21. Steve for Kahn. North Dakota. Grand Steve North Kahn. North Dakota. Freshman. Basket for Harris. So for Aaron Harris, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 points in this half, 15 for the game. He and John Sonat leading scores for the Sioux, 14 by Doug Moe. Already on the bench with fouls, Dan Cawson with 11, and Tom, Todd Bakken with 10. Well, there's part of the, uh, we've seen some of the student population. There's some of the adults who are here watching this ball game and enjoying it immensely, especially when they are cheering for the Jackrabbits. Free throw is good for McDonald. Just shakes his head. There's a smile on his face saying, boy, when things are going right, you get the nice rolls to boot. 24 for McDonald. 14 in the second half. Nice round figure, 25 points in a night for Paul McDonald, 85-74. Gives him 48 points against these two leading teams in the North Central Conference on two straight nights. That's not too bad a production. Harris again looking to penetrate. Gives it off to the to keep Yeah, he took steps with the ball. 
So as a result of tonight's action, it looks like North Dakota State will sit alone unless, of course, Morningside can come back, and I'm not discounting that possibility whatsoever. But they're down by six in OT. Winsenberg's going to bring it out. He's going to give it to Jorgensen. They're going to tick off the clock, and the crowd will pick up the chant very quickly. Six seconds. Five. McDonald is fouled by Steve Kahn. From Grand Forks, North Dakota. He's just a freshman. Well, Dave Gunther looks like he's got a pretty good crew ready to come back again next year. His dad is stationed at the Air Force Base in Grand Forks. Paul McDonald at the free throw line. With just five seconds to play, the final score is all that's in question. 26 points for McDonald. 16 of them in this half, and he has got a bunch from the free throw line. Jack Rabbit's going to take everybody out of the lane now as the congratulations begin for the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, picking up a couple of big wins this weekend at home. McDonald finishes with 27 points. Up to Seaston, cross to Lingenfelder. Two, he steps one up at the horn, short, and this game is history. It is all over as Scholastic Rifles went into the crowd. Final 87 to 74. While I compile my final stats, Jim, your thoughts on the game? Well, this was quite a ball game. Of course, we thought early in the game that it was going to be a bad one for State because uh, Steve Lingenfelder picked up his third foul early in that first half. And it looked like maybe they were going to intimidate him down the way. Uh, Clawson was playing well. They were hitting well from outside. And it seemed to be a, a real game of switching momentum because there for a while, near the end of the first half, it looked like the Jacks, despite Lingenfelder's fouls, were going to be able to pull away. They got up by 7, 36-29. Then they gave up four straight points, including one right near the buzzer. And they went to the locker room 36-33. They never again trailed in the game, although uh, UND was able to come to within one at 36-35. And the Jacks just kept pulling away little by little. Dan Clawson and Todd Bakken fouled out with uh, six and four minutes uh, respectfully. They're ready to go, and so nobody for the Jacks ever did foul out, despite the fact that Lingenfelder didn't pick up his fourth foul. Balance scoring for both sides, that's the way the game went. Okay, let's look at the scoring of the game. First of all, for South Dakota State, a stellar performance. 50 points in two nights, 23 last night for Paul McDonald, 27 tonight, 20 for Steve Lingenfelder unofficially, 16 for Phil Jorgensen, 14 for Bob Winsenberg, 10 for John Brown. So everybody that scored, scored double figures for South Dakota right. State. For North Dakota, one, two, three, four, five minute double figures, as Jim told you, 15 for John Solonoff, 15 for Aaron Harris, 14 for Doug Moe, 11 for Dan Clausen, 10 for Todd Bakken, five points for Rod Merriam, four points for Jim Iverson. No game next week, folks, but be back with us on the night of February 7th when Third Right and Northern Colorado Bears will be in town to play South Dakota State right here in Frost Arena. Looking forward to it. Women win 88-71, the final here, 87-74. The Jackrabbits go to 11-8, 5-2 in the North Central Conference. For Jim Thompson, this is Tom Maxwell. Good night, everybody.